Anybody? Raise your hand if you remember the verse. The, the, not, not our verse that y'all are bringing tonight, but the verse that I said I, for me was our verse. Anybody remember it? Y'all too? Nobody else? I know some of you wasn't here. But now I would really expect to see you boys doing a little bit better. So I, I don't need it there. I need it to be said. Why don't you two young ladies tell us what that is? Very good. Now, can somebody tell me what that says? Without looking it up, Garson. Absolutely. I would really, really, really love if there was more of this that knew that the next time we come together. Because it is a lap into our feet and a light into our path. And what is, a, what is the word? That, yeah, in the end, it's Jesus. And so where do we find it? Where do we find the Word? The Bible. The Bible. That's right. And where do we know that the Word is Jesus? How do we know that? John 1, 1. John 1, chapter 1, describes it 1 through 5 and then verse 14. That's right. So it's all there. Now, our assignment was to bring a verse. And for those of y'all who weren't here last week, the, the, the ones that were here, most of them, I think, have a verse that they are going to, uh, uh, or that they were going to look for that they feel like is a verse that fits this youth group for us. The one that I had brought last week was Psalm 1905. Thy word is a lamp to my feet, my lips to my path. So, would anybody like to volunteer with the verse that they brought for tonight? Would First Thessalonians. I like that one. It's very good. There it is on the board for everybody to see. First Thessalonians 5 11. I will read over that again. As it says, as y'all can see, wherefore, oh, wait, first Thessalonians 5 and 1. 5 and 1. That's not, what did you, read yours again? Okay, and what version are you reading from? <coughs> Christian Standard, okay. All right, in the King James it says, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Which is basically what uh, he just said, and just in a different version. So, why did you pick that one, Well, That's right. Absolutely. Help build each other up. As part of the reason that we come to church is to edify or build each other up, to comfort each other, to help each other. Because there's going to always be times when some of us, some of us, you know, maybe a little bit down and others are a little bit up. And vice versa, so that goes back and forth. And that's what we do. We edify each other. We lift each other up. That's, a, that's an excellent verse. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. You got John 14, 6. The whole standby for side. Could you tell us what it says? Okay. Why? Do you pick that one for this youth group? Other than the fact that it's your standby, it's your go-to. I don't think that it's just this, but as a whole Christian community, what separates us from the different religions that we believe Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that he is the truth. And that he is the truth. What, and what, what is the specifically then, what is the thing that makes Jesus different than, say, Muhammad, Gandhi, uh, He's the only, he's the only <coughs> religion, ours is the only religion with a living God. Jesus is the only, and some would say prophet, although I, he's not the prophet, you know, he's the Messiah, that rose from the dead. So, uh, way to fall back on your, on your whole standby, and, and, and that's a pretty good politician answer for that. Yeah, yeah. I was, I'm, I'm proud of you. Now, for your next assignment, pick a verse that's not your favorite verse. Not just a good job. Hey, there's a reason why we have favorite verses. And that's the truth. 
All right, who else? Who would like to share their verse? Titus 3.1. Oh, now that's a good one. Go ahead. Can you read it to us? That's Remind Titus 3.1. Remind the people to be subject to rules and authority, to be obedient, to, to be ready to do whatever is good. Very good. I like that. We should always be good. Right? What happened? What are we supposed to do when people are bad to us? Don't care. Don't don't just give me the cheap answer, but give me the give me your reasoning. Yes, ma'am. Go get an That's a good idea. What we're really looking for is when somebody does us bad. Do them good. Is that easy to do? Yeah. Does it work? Have you ever tried that? Have you ever tried to somebody that's doing you wrong? You just you're friendly and kind and good to them. Have you ever tried that? Absolutely. <laughs> but be careful because you just exhibited that this week and it worked. And I'm she and he's trying to be tough, but so she, she got yeah, something. Yeah. Now, I, I can tell you a little story about that too. Not on Denise. But I, uh, and this was an instant this was a learning experience for me. I was a pretty young fellow, probably about uh, I'd have been 25, 26 years old then probably. I was driving my little super 10, my little red country corvette down a dirt road going to work where I worked at, and I come around the corner. And I was doing way faster than I should have. When I come around that corner, I was running around on the side. And there was a two county workers right there in the vehicle. Now, I wasn't going to hit them. I was in control. But it scared them half to death. And I dusted them out like you wouldn't believe. I worked about a half mile down the road from there. And I went on down to the road, pulled in, and got out. And was standing there with three or four of my co-workers. And we were standing out by the road talking before we went inside to work. And here comes... The boy. At that time, he would have been the uh, he would have been that district county uh, road for He comes sliding up in there. He was, he was mad, and he should have been to be perfectly honest. He, and he gets he goes to getting out of the truck, and before he can even start talking to me, I uh, to him, and I don't know why I've done this. I looked at him. I said, "Man, I'm sorry about that. I I, I shouldn't have been driving that fast, and I shouldn't have left y'all out." I said, I, "I apologize. I'm sorry. I scared y'all." looked at it and he goes, well, I appreciate that, but just please slow down in the future. I said, don't you worry, I'll do it. And he got back in the street. Now, why did y'all slow down? No, no, no. It was some years later before I slowed down. But, but it, well, that's an example, and I'm not tooting my horn, because like I told you, I literally don't know why I've done that. Because back then, most of the time, I'd have said, well, you'll get out of the way next time, won't you? That would have been my answer. But for whatever reason, do I want to No, I don't want to. Wish you didn't have, but that's that's why you were paid, and he, and that's not exactly the same. But he was fixing to be, he was fixing to repay my badness with some badness, and I diffused it by being good. Not that I was good, God worked through me in a time that I wasn't usually listening to try. A voluntary verbal apology does It does. It, it goes an amazing. It goes beyond anything we can go. I agree with you 100% on that. When somebody apologizes for something, for something they've done wrong, and they do it without being prompted to do so by anybody, there is nothing that feels better than that right there. Because I'm sorry. It is. It's tough. Hey, we're, we're proud. We're, we're proud. We can't help it. That's our natural way of being. So we... To say I was, to say I'm sorry is to say I was wrong. And that is not an easy thing for us to do. And yes, you know, it, it, and that's tough. So, anyway, that was a good one. A good one. To the kids, when you make that first attempt to do good, and it don't seem like it works, don't let that discourage you from doing it again. That's right. And it typically takes more than one try. Absolutely. And here's the thing, when we are doing good to others that are doing wrong to us, we're not doing it for them. Remember that. You're not doing it for their sake. You're doing it for your very own sake, for your relationship with God. Because when you can when you can 
get beyond all of that selfishness. Because selfishness says, okay, well, I tried to be good to you, but you ain't going to let me be good to you. All right, I won't. That's the selfish part of us, and that's what we are. That's what we naturally do. But when we get beyond that, our relationship with the Lord is that much sweeter. It's that much better. Our community, <coughs> that satisfaction, that, that thing that they talk about, that, uh, you know, that God-shaped hole, that vacuum or that void that's within every human being because of that separation of God from us from cause of sin in the garden. At that point, that begins to fill with God by the Holy Spirit. And there's comfort, there's peace, there's contentment. Contentment is a wonderful thing. That's where it only comes from God. So that was a very good one. You got us talking for a long time. Thank you, buddy. Anybody else want to share that verse? Hey, beat you to it. Hebrews 24. Hebrews 24? Or chapter? I mean, chapter. Chapter 10? Yes. 10, and, or 10, 24, 25. Go ahead, hey. Man. And why would you pick that one, hey? Okay. Absolutely. That's wonderful. And that's the thing. I mean, think about this. <clears throat> you want that piece of other God. You ought to have it. You don't have the money for it. Nobody else is around. Nobody sees it. It's not the things you were taking. It was your sisters or your brothers. Yeah. They said no. It's a little easier if nobody knows and nobody sees it. Am I right? But what happens when there's somebody there that will see it? We're a little less likely to do it all. I mean, think about it. We're we are. Yeah, well, we don't want to do something we're not supposed that we feel in our hearts that is not right. Especially when we know that that other person knows that too. So when we're in the company of people that want to do the right thing, it encourages <coughs> us to do the right thing. That's what that's a then and vice versa. Absolutely. And it goes round and round and round. You know what the biggest thing about the Bible is? Is it's not just a straight line, although the way to heaven is. The Bible is a big circle. Everything in the Bible, from the Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 1 to 22 21, every bit of it is just a big circle. It all points back to each other. What's it all point back to? It's all about Jesus. It's all about the Word. The Word is light. The light is Word. Word. Jesus. Another circle. It's all a circle. So when we, when we come together, we encourage each other to still do good rather than to stray, rather than to go take that thing from my brother or my sister, or to kind of pick that thing up in class, or or to plagiarize something when we're in, you know, that we know we ain't gonna get caught, although y'all get caught now too easy because plagiarism is caught on words and everything else. But used to at least we could find an old book that was hard to or they wasn't around much, and you could plagiarize a little bit and might get away with it. Y'all ain't gonna get away with it. But things like that, and, it, and why does that matter? Why would it matter to, if, do y'all even know what plagiarism is? Copying. Copying somebody else's writing for your own, right? Turning it in. Is that wrong? And I'm not talking about as far as the teacher says it's wrong. Is it wrong? Why? It's wrong if you say it's your work. Absolutely. It's not probably excited. Yeah, it's not probably excited. So why is that wrong? It's a lie. It's a lie. But see, even those little things is what this, our youth group, our church, whatever, helps each other to do that. That's part of that's part of why we come to church. That's why that's why it's important to come to church. I have a question. Okay. What is, what is the um, what is the punishment or the outcome? A sin of direct. It is a sin. It's a it sin. Is. All right. So therefore, we know that it's a sin. We we. So what is okay? I think we have to go back and answer it like this. Maybe we should look deeper into that. But let's look at it like this. 
We all heard, have heard me say it. Sin is sin, right? Everybody agree with that? Sin is sin. Well, let me ask you this question. Is sins sin? Is it, it can you apply the same thing to the word sins as you do to the word sin? Does that make sense? But so Alright, you're right. So my, Yes. So but what I'm saying is, although it's true, sin is sin. In God's eyes, sin is sin. And that's bottom line, straight point blank. A lie is equal to murder. Is equal to blood. Is equal to pride. Is equal to anything. Yeah. Still a little piece of bubble gum, or still in a million dollars. Sin is sin. But now let me ask you this: You, as a person, as a kid, it's like a child, young people. You're stealing a piece of bubble gum. The first time that ever happens, you're going to be nervous. You're going to be worked up and scared. Somebody's going to catch me. Oh my goodness. But you do it. And you get away. Nobody catches me. So the next time I steal that piece of bubble gum, what happens? I don't, yeah, it gets to you. It's a little bit easier. What happens then a little bit later down the line? Still that hundred dollars out of somebody's stuff, yeah. And and now I don't. And not only do I steal that hundred dollars, I justify why I steal that hundred dollars to myself. And then what happens? My next die. Kill somebody. Now. Is a person going to start off robbing a big bank or robbing a piece of stealing a piece of gold? That's right. So I ask you again, I sin is sin. But are sins the same? No, sin is not the same. Why? Because we and, it, and this is I'm glad this got, got come up because what I'm going to be giving out for the reading assignment this week literally works in this. It, it deals in something. Part of it, it? So, so the let me put it like this: the penalty for lying is that you have sinned, you have broke God's heart, and when you lie, you are going to put yourself in a position to lie more. And until you repent of that, it's going to snowball and turn into more and more things. Until our conscience sears, and we no longer even think of repentance. Proverbs nineteen nine says, "A false witness not." What is it good? Because why? Why does, it, why does it say it perishes? The wages of sin is death. death. That's right. So. And that's why we need to say. And that's exactly what we need to say. That's why. That's what's so wonderful about the the the, the age of grace. Although I don't deserve it, I get it, and that's that's one. So another one. Awesome. So this this is good okay, stuff. Okay. Yep. But I just finished on my prophet for the week, okay? and with that came the whole. God's mercy and grace is there along with genuine repentance. So to extend on what Jess was saying, yes, that's the wage, but we also know that when we repent to God for our sins, He does hear us. So I mean, it's, that, that is the hope in a Christian being saved. You want to hear more about that? Come Sunday, I certainly is out of joy. The key I verse is out of gold. I spent a day, I spent a whole day on on on, uh, on this. So uh, we'll compare our notes. How's that? Yeah, but I, but that's just it. When, when, well, I don't want to go too far into that right now. But sin, unrepentant, results in more sin. Sin repentant. It's repentant. It's forgotten. You know, and you're going to get it. What about this? is restoration. It is. That's right. And here's what's awesome. Y'all heard the saying, uh, forgive. I can forgive you, but I can't forgive you. We know that. And, 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 how, and that happens to many of us. Am I not right? I mean, honestly, we don't forget about it most of the time. But what, do we, or what are we supposed to do? 
And do what? Forget. We're supposed to forget it. God forget. He forget. You know what happens when He forgives you of your sin? You know, it's not like we're going to get to heaven when we have to repent. It's not going to be. It's not going to be that He goes, well, you know, there was this time you've done it, but you repented. You repented. All right. And then you did it. Well, I forgave you, but oh, I didn't forget you. No. He's literally going to look at you and He's not going to remember that. It's gone. That's correct. How many times do we forgive and forget? And we do. And that's the thing is we don't forgive. And I'll say this. There is some wisdom in not forgetting, but in this way. Don't let yourself be taken. But if the situation warrants, let yourself be taken. What did he say? He said 70 times 7. Why did he say 70 times 7? Did he mean 70 times 7? No, he meant don't ever quit we can't be forgiven if we don't forget. That's the, and that's the, I mean, look at the Lord's Prayer. What, it was a few weeks ago, a month ago, whatever, I, and I did the sermon about that part of the Lord's Prayer, about the fact that we have to be forgiven. But in order to be forgiven, we have to forgive. And do you know, that goes right back to that, the Bible's a serpent. It is. Because we have to ask for forgiveness first, and we do. But in order to forgive, we got or to be forgiven. We've got to forgive, and it all—it's just a circle. It just runs right there. Now, are we all perfect, and do we all do it that way? <laughs> but we try, and we—if we, if we repent, if we're truly repenting in our hearts, that's, that's what matters. Because God forgives. So anyway, good stuff. I like all this. Next verse. What's our next verse? Let's go ahead. Okay. First Corinthians fifteen fifty-eight. All right, go right ahead. All right, now why did you, and I'm going to read, uh, what version have you got? NIV. NIV, okay. All right, Josh, he had the NIV. You can put the double up there if you want to. And that's what I may ask y'all now, when you say it, say the version, because Josh, you a lot Most of them. the time he has yeah, a lot of versions them. back there and he can both up so y'all can see the parallel there. But therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Why'd you pick that? Because um <coughs> And how do we stand firm the best? And what else? What's the what's the human part of it here? Together. Together we're strong. Together we encourage. We've already heard of this. I mean the theme here is that we do encourage each other, we strengthen each other, we build each other up. Go. Next. Somebody else? Can see a hand? Darcy. Just a little side note that, you know, I wrote it all the way. I write all in my Bible. I actually have that underlined in my Bible. I, and I have wrote, and it's not necessarily exactly the same, but people have long hoped and dreamed for a peaceful utopia. Y'all yeah, know what a utopia is, right? Y'all still learn that kind of stuff in school? Utopia, a perfect society, a perfect world. Uh, and it is possible. Jude, it's possible. 
but it's only possible through God. Man can create only sin and chaos. So we come here together, and if we don't bring God in here, what do we have? We have chaos. But if we center this around God, then we have that perfect. We have that perfect place. We have that that all of the good stuff that you just talked about in that in, in the verse there. That's that's what we have for our communion together. It's just that. Thank you, Carson. I like it. Next. Matthew, Thank you. Uh, Matthew 7.1. Matthew 7, Go ahead. Matthew 7, do, not it. do not judge. Now, go ahead. Why did you pick that? <laughs> That's all right, then, folks. But it is, it's a good one. Now, let me ask y'all something, because there are people that will argue this fact. Does that pertain to every human being? No, 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 no. Well, we do need to judge, like, the court system. Okay. Right. Does that statement, does that verse, does that, is Jesus talking about Everybody, we're not to judge each other. Not, I think he's saying don't judge until you know. I like, don't judge out there. I've read what it says. It's on the judging it says, and um, it's like it's not about the if you see a splinter in someone else's eye, make sure that's a big piece of wood that's in yours and out first before that's you right. tell them to take it out. Yeah, yeah. And here's the, here's something for you to know on that judgment. Okay, hey, you're right. We don't need to judge each other. We don't have to. They don't do any good. I think, uh, I think that's one of the main reasons non-believers keep coming to church or don't come to church. They feel they're going to be. <coughs> they feel like they're yeah. going to be. And, and that happens. Yeah. But I will say on that, that when you come in that door, it's usually not the people here that's judging you. It's your you judge it's your, you judge yourself. yourself. That's it's exactly right. Here. Now, I, I will say this too. Do you know that as fellow Christians, we do have to judge each other. So. Accountability. And that's right. we got to make sure. The point here is don't be petty. Don't be. It's not about those things. It is about a godly. The judging that we do is a godly love to each other. Where we see we see some, a brother or a sister in Christ that's struggling. And they're getting into something they shouldn't be getting into. We know that. Now, we don't need to judge them and call them out. We don't need to talk to us ourselves about them. We need to go to them and talk to them. So, excellent verse. And guess what? It goes great with this truth because if we, especially you kids, if you see things that you, your fellow Oak Grovians are starting to steer down the wrong way, help each other out. <coughs> well, so, I want to elaborate on that just a little bit too right. because this is like conversations I've had. Carson and maybe some of them are not having this usage yet. Like when you see a friend that's like like willingly going against the will of God, like being bold as a Christian doesn't mean like in the group, like shut the down. Sometimes it means when it's you and that person quiet to yourself, just being a being like, you know I love you. And that's exactly I love what it you. Is. I just want you to know it's burdening my heart that you're living like you're making this choice. You know this is not God's will for your life. Like sometimes that's what it needs to be. a yes. gentle It should always be a gentle word. Word goes a whole lot further. And it's more genuine when it's private. And it should be private. But now there is times when it shouldn't be. And you know what that is. That's one time. Another time is is when you have a Christian leader. It can, be, it can be public. It can be very direct. When did this happen in the Bible? Peter was visiting him and Paul were together. I can't remember exactly where they were at. But they, uh, they've been there. Peter has accepted the fact that Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. That Jesus has laid that out. And that... We are past the, the, the age of law and we are in the age of grace. 
the, the law no longer pertains in the sense of Jews can't eat with Gentiles and there's certain foods we can't and certain foods we can't. Peter's been hanging out with Paul and the Gentiles and he's been going along with this and suddenly some church leaders <coughs> in Jerusalem come to where they're at. What does Peter do? Peter walks away from the, the Gentiles' table where Paul's at and goes to where they're at and refuses to eat with them while these guys are there. What's Paul do? Paul stands up and says, Hey, Peter, what's wrong with you, man? You've been over here the whole time you've been here doing just like the Lord has told us to do. You've been eating with these guys, but suddenly all our buddies from Jerusalem show up and you took good again, huh? And he did that. He called him out in front of everybody. Why? Because Peter, yeah, it is, it's an act. Peter is a church leader. He is a lead this, uh, uh, disciple, a lead apostle. He is a leader. And when he messes up, it needs to be publicly brought out. If I mess up, you need to call me out. Why? Because I stand up here and I try, I try and I tell you what I believe God lays on my heart to tell you. If I'm, if I'm out there or in here or wherever and I am bringing shame to that, you need to call it out. You need to make sure people know that I, you called me out because I'm not doing what I... That is not what he should be doing. That's when, it's, that's when you do it that way. That's when you judge in the way we would think you judge in a lot of ways. But, excellent uh, uh, verse. Remember, we do judge each other a little bit, but let's do it with a gentle heart. A soft word. Not a big All right. Next. Got one? Do Wendy? All right, go ahead. Good. Um, 2 Corinthians 1 12. And I've got the Christian standard Bible. 2 Corinthians 1 12 and the Christian standard. Uh, in mine it says, Indeed, this is our boast, the testimony of our conscience is that we have conducted ourselves in the world, and especially for you with bodily sincerity and purity, not by human wisdom, but by God's grace. And um, after just reading up on it a little bit, what I jotted down was that that scripture tells us our heart and mouth need to go together and our conduct needs to agree uh, with both. But we need to behave the way we speak and the way our hearts. We need to be the same person here, the same person right. at work, same we person at school. <clears throat> and that if we aim to please God and not self, this will not only improve our relationship with God, but it will also be a testimony to others that hopefully we can. What is, what is more important, our words or our actions? Is our words important? Very important. But our actions are even more important because our actions, our words can be whatever we get, we get to come out of this old mouth. Our actions are going to be what comes from our heart. What's it say in Mark? It's, man is not defiled by things on the outside, but rather we are defiled by the things that's, what, that's inside of us. Our actions will show you what's inside of us. And another reason I didn't choose that is that I felt like sort of it was saying basically like in layman's terms, and this is important to me, like with our little family of you here, that you don't compartmentalize your Christianity. You're not, you're not showing up loving the Lord on Wednesday nights when we gather here, but living a whole different way in front right. of your peers, and because that is a very dangerous thing to play with other people's time. In other people's attorney in your own. In, in your own. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, it, it's that, that a lot of times is another thing that can turn people away. And as believers, we're responsible for people away. Believe me, there's more, there's more people that don't come to church because of people that's at church or go to church and then are different when they're not at church than probably any other reason. And that's the truth. And, and that's sad, but that's the truth. When we... When we are kind of like the Pharisee that prayed and made sure everybody heard him pray and he looked good, he sounded good, he spoke well, everything was all this good. But that same Pharisee then walked down the road, you know, and he'll uh, go to the other side of the road when the Samaritan's laying in the ditch, you know, or that kind of thing. Where his words were great, but his actions were not. And Who wants to be that? Really to that point, I mean, I think it, it takes a long time, but I do think that once you get to a point where you're comfortable, just, just 
design the movie you want to be in the yeah. universe, there's so much freedom in there. Like, it's like the pressure's off. The pressure's off. That's right. Yeah. But it's kind of, it's, it's like, you know, you break, once you break through the ice of that part about, I mean, I am a full blooded Christian. I believe every word of the Bible. I am born again Christian. And I want you to be a born again Christian. See, that's the thing. That, here's the part that's wonderful about being a Christian. When, when you, the more you, the more mature you get in your Christian walk, the more you're going to, it's going to, God's going to lay it on your heart that if, if somebody is not saved, their eternity is going to be hell. You know, I, I seen somebody put something on uh, Facebook said, uh, you know, he didn't want anything to do uh, with a religion or with religion uh, uh, or Christianity. I think you used specific because I, he didn't need anything that, to, that, that took hell and the, and the devil to intimidate you to do right. Well, see, that's not why you're a Christian. It's got nothing to do with it. To be perfectly honest, as you become, and don't get me wrong, I hope hell, I hope hell and Satan scares you. I hope it does. Well, hell anyway. And, and, and I hope you understand what hell really is. You know, we, we try to describe it as this place that's off there some fire. Oh, uh, this place that's bad that we weep and the gnash and all this stuff. But do you know what hell really is? Hell is a separation from God forever. A complete and total separation where you never, ever, ever get the things that, are, that God gives you. There, there will be no peace. You will never know comfort. You will never know contentment. You will never know anything good. You will only know. Think about this. The worst, the worst anxious moment you've ever had in your life. Multiply that by infinity and it never goes away. That's hell. Think about the worst pain you've ever had in your life. Multiply by infinity. That's hell. But that's not the reason we are Christians. We're not Christians because of how bad hell is. We're Christians because we want united with God. And as you, the more mature you come in your Christian walk, the more you realize that that's why I'm a Christian. Because I want to be back together again with God. And then, all of a sudden, one day it teach you. Everybody that's not saved, they will never, they will never have that. And then that starts to break your heart. And that's what being a Christian is about. And that's why you start boldly being a Christian. And I'm not talking about cramming stuff about people's face or down their throats. I'm talking about I'm a Christian and I'll tell you all about it. All you've got to do is ask me. Or you watch the way I act. And one day you're going to say, why do you look like so Or why, why is it when bad things happen, you do all right, you get through it. And that's when you Guess what? That's not about me. That's when you go, whoa, the door just opened up. Let me tell you about Jesus. That's why you're a Christian. And that's the, that's the thing. It's, it's about that. It's about, that's what it is to live that life and to have that freedom to live that life. It's because you get the, you get the help. You get the help plant a seed, you get the help water, and then you got the increase. And the increase happens in us too. That's awesome. That's the best part. And I just want to say one more thing about it, like in reference to our youth. I think they need to remember there's a lot more kids like them that also are a little bit, I mean, because they're growing, they're young, they're fake. They're also fearful. Absolutely. Of, of how they'll be seen. We had our, uh, what's the thing around the pole? See so yeah, at the pole no. um, a couple weeks ago, and I was talking to one of my students that actually spoke there. Um, in between classes one day, and I was like, I just want to just tell you, I'm so proud of you. I know how hard it is to see the other front of the years. And, and she looked at me, and she was just the sweetest thing, so genuine. And she said, Mr. Meow, she said, I don't know why it's so hard to be a Christian at school. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, you know, and I told her, I said, there's, you're not alone. You know, there's other Christians that are here that feel just like you. You know, uh, Elijah once thought he was the only one left in Israel. And God reminded me, I've got 7,000. So never, ever been in Israel. You're not wrong. You're not. There's always one of the Christians around. And they are all. You may not be able to see them real easy. They may not be real big on it. And I can tell you this. One of my greatest regrets is that I didn't live more boldly for Christ earlier in my life. Amen. 
And that is a, that is a regret. Why is that a regret? Because maybe, maybe I could have helped somebody. Well, it's, it's sad because he's loved us that much. He does love us. He loved us before we had it. Before he's, we were right. he's never not loved us that much. No. So it's sad when you realize. And that's the thing. That's that's we realize. Right. And we can, and we can, oh, well. Here's the, here's the thing you do remember that. Do not, it's okay what's behind you. But you can't do something about what's ahead of you. So that part of life that's ahead of you is be that Christian. Be that Christian that is an example, that help, that leads. And, and we need it in our schools, y'all. Because there are <coughs> other kids that's Christians, that's timid and scared and they don't know what to do. And all they really need is somebody that's going to step up a little bit. And you don't got to, I mean, again, you don't have to make a big, extravagant thing, but just, just love the Lord and make sure that you're in doctrine. And it's going to come up, let me assure you. If you're struggling with that, some about that trying to, you don't, hey, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed or, or it's, uh, I don't know how to say it. I promise you, if you're trying to do it and you're not on the way over there, Satan is going to, he's going to make sure that there's an opportunity that comes up where somebody's going to question you. Out and out. Somebody's going to say something as simple as, oh, he's a Christian. How are you going to react? Don't be tough, but you know what the easiest way to do it or thing to do is to say, yep, sure am. And that may be all you need to do. Yep, sure am. Just keep on going. So but don't ever don't ever deny it. Don't do that. Don't make a mistake. But I will say this, if you do, there's a guy that we've already spoke about a little bit tonight that denied him one time and he's still in this So there's a chance for you. I'm not getting far into that either because he might be part of something. But anyways, all right, anybody else? Who's next? Go ahead, Jessica. I actually have two. Okay. Um, the first one is Colossians 2, 6 through 7. Um, the second one is Philippians 4, 5 through 7. Okay. Um, the first one is Colossians 2, 6 through 7. And this was actually the first verse that we, Jennifer, Mandy, and I picked for the youth groups and I have Christian standards. So then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in Him being rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, and overflowing with praise. <coughs> so, obviously that one had a couple meanings for us. You know, we were bringing children up, being built up in him, and, and the rooted part kind of had a tie to our name as Oak Grove. Uh -huh. And so and, that was, yeah, no, was kind of where some of that verse came from. Um, and that was why I picked that one. For a very obvious reason. And it is a good one. I like it. But go ahead with your next one. And my other one is John 16.33. John 16.33. I'm hollering for the guy in the back. It's, it's, not, it's so, it's so well, but it's very hard to hear back there. Hey, I mean, you really are. Go ahead. Um, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will have suffering in this world. So be courageous. I have conquered the world. And I chose this one because this has always brought me a whole lot of peace. And the world doesn't get any prettier by the day. Nope. And we've already talked about them, you know, being in school and having lives outside of this church house and it not being easy out there for them. So never doubt that he has your back. That's right. And the thing is, is this going to be full of lots will be full of trials and tribulations. That's going to be guaranteed. That's what part of it. That's why. But the, just like you said, the, the contentment is Jesus has assured us that he is able to the world. What else do we know? What else do we know? That's a very good one. I like both of those. For time's sake, I'm going to try to go a little faster and not speak a certain way myself. Did you? Proverbs 22 6. I know. wonderful verse and it is a verse that I have heard many people say well that's not true you see what happened that's not what it says read it again 
train up a child in the way he should go, and that's he is also she. This is just the old English. Train up a child in the way they should go, the way they should live. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. But so many depart from it. Yeah, but you know what they know? They know. And you know that I would, I would say that probably, and I may be wrong on this, and I'm not trying to say that this is anything back or biblical. There's some biblical back and forth. This. I would say that the vast majority of children that are raised in a Christian home, before they leave this world, they come back some shape or fashion. I've watched it. And I, I've, I've lived almost 50 years now. I have known people that were raised in the church. Not just, and I don't want to say that. No, I ain't saying that. They were raised in a godly Christian home. So their wives are those. So many of us have. Some for a long, long time. But when it was, before it was all over with, Why? Because the whole time they knew. They knew what they were supposed to do. They knew because they remembered when they was that 10 year old kid sitting there that one day the Lord spoke to and called them. They knew right then what this was. They had been called by the Lord. And you've got to be called by it. But I promise you, they ain't a soul on this earth that had had the call or the opportunity at some point or we don't have it. For those that are raised by God and all, the Lord tells us to pray for our children. And we do. Job, what did Job do? He sacrificed for his kids every day. He stood in the gap for them. We stand in the gap for them. Train up these children. This is why this is so important. Of a child in the way and when he is old, he will not depart. I promise you that. That's the, that's a promise that was made to us by the Lord. Because why? Every word of this book is true. Absolute every word. Next, and we got one. The Proverbs eleven seventeen. Proverbs eleven and seventeen. Okay. Merciful man or the kind man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. Somebody tell me what they think that means. That sounds a little selfish, don't it? I mean, doeth good to his own soul. What is that? I thought it was supposed to be unselfish. Or is that probably not selfish? You see, Our, when we are kind and we are merciful, as God has been merciful for us, then we're going to do kindness and goodness to other people. When we do kindness and goodness to other people, it just comes back to us. When the circle was said, this is all a big circle, so it's that. And how do we practice that mercy and kindness and love? Well, not much. There's no better way than right here church because there will be things that will press that you will will try you on those things but when you show that kindness it's going to be good for your soul you know what else it's going to be it's going to be good for that person that you're showing that kindness to even though they may not be asking for it now as to the one that causes trouble you just hurt yourself and that's what it's talking about so we can keep coming to each other anybody else Josh, God. Yeah, got 1 Timothy 4 and 12. 1 Timotheus 4 and 12. <coughs> uh, it says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, of faith, and in purity. Uh, so to me that says... Don't think of your youth as a dis of your youth as a disadvantage as a Christian. 
um, you can you can do good just as well. You can help people's lives just as well as any adult by your words, the way you you conversate with people, your charity, how nice, how you are to other people, uh, but unfortunate in your spirit, your faith, your purity, all the time, just as much as you are when you're a teenager, and even more so when you're a teenager, you can you can actually reach, especially older people as a teenager, much more so than most adults can. So don't despise your youth as a Christian uh, in that sense. Use your youth as a Christian to help spread the word. So don't think that I can do all the good in the world and it's not going to do any good for anybody else as a, as a teenager. Uh, as a teenager, you can be just as impactful as any adult can be. And, and sometimes even more so. Even more so. And a good example of that, other than the fact that Timothy was an early church leader, he was young and he did doubt himself sometimes. That's exactly what that verse is about. Is the fact that he did doubt himself and his authority sometimes in, in his preaching and his church leadership. And Paul was telling him, don't you do that. You you know you've been called. Yet God has given you this. But another an example of this is in Job. The three friends that's talking to Job, you know, through the Job, they're just getting hard on old Job, man. I mean, you know, they're not really bringing a, a godly conversation there. But then there's Elihu, who's the fourth, who says, I'm young and I've sat here all this whole week long while y'all been talking, not saying a word out of respect because y'all were older and wiser, but in fact, Elihu was the wiser. And he was the young. He was the youth. So, you know, David. Oh, absolutely, yes, David. There's, there's so many that goes through the Bible, but but don't just, you know, just because you're young, I don't mean you can't be effective in the kingdom of God. So y'all make sure you do. All right, anybody else got one for tonight? Is there anybody else? Going once, going twice. Sold. Sold. Y'all, that was, I uh, enjoyed that thoroughly, and I would like for us to do something similar to this again in the near future. But here's what I am going to do for tonight. I would like, in some of your reading time this week, to look at Romans chapter 1. You can look at the whole chapter, you can look at pieces of the chapter, whatever, but I encourage you to read and study some in Romans chapter 1, and then a few of you may be ready to make a few comments about the chapter for next week. If you pay any attention to me whatsoever, you know I refer to Romans chapter 1 a whole lot. It is a, it is you could say that it's imagery. I mean, it's truth and it's real and there's nothing about it that you have to think. But it is, it, you can draw such an image of the world, of life, of everything, of the whole creation from Romans chapter 1. That's what Paul was doing. And it is a wonderful book to me. It's got a lot of sad truths, but it is truth. You can see it. It literally, you can see it live out. And some of that's getting older, you start seeing this stuff. But study it as, you, as a young person. And look at how, look at that lens of Romans chapter 1 and how it, this world and your decisions will mold your life and has molded the, the world and the life of others. Just, it's a wonderful chapter. So, anyway, there was that. Now, we have been way longer than that than I expected, that, but that's a good thing because I think it was really good and I enjoyed that thoroughly. Um, so, thank you all for participating. Find this stuff. If anybody ever has anything they'd like to share, always feel free. That's something that I don't know that we talk about because we kind of do it anyway. But if you ever have something you want to speak about, talk about, praise the Lord about, whatever it is, make sure you speak up. If you have something you know, need, make sure you speak up. Do those things. That's what we're here for. That's what we talk about is education. All right. Anybody got anything else? Yes, ma'am. They do. And you know, here's the thing. We talked about forgiveness a while ago. And it's true. God forgives and He forgives. And He does. But as long as we live in this world, as long as you got to understand, we may confess our faults. We may turn our lives around and live for God and be the boldest 
soul winner in the world, but we will always pay the consequences. We will always deal with the repercussions of the decisions that we've made, regardless in this world. It's going to happen. Look at Paul. Paul, who was arguably the greatest soul winner in the world, still dealt, and I loved it. They, they, it was something I, I thought of before, but you see it in that movie, the Apostle Paul was so awesome. His demons, as you, as we often would say, the things that, that bring us down and things like that. For Paul, it was all of those Christians he killed and persecuted before he got saved. Now, you say, well, he, he got over it. He dealt with that for the rest of his life. Think about laying in a, in a filthy, nasty, dark prison all along with nothing but time on your head to I promise you, that's what he thought. That was the things that drug him. And I loved It's good to me. I ain't going to lie. When at the end of that movie, when he dies, and he steps into heaven, into eternity, he's met by every one of those that he killed. That's powerful. And I mean that's powerful. Because, and, and, and if it's not powerful to you yet, keep on reaching and keep on praying because that's powerful. And that's truth. We're gonna be we're gonna be drugged down by this world. I don't care how strong we are in our faith. And we're gonna deal with the things that we've decided in this life. It's gonna end up never go away. But praise the Lord, we've got something to look forward to. That's the that's the wonderful part about that. So, anybody got anything else? We good? I know we're about to do Oh, that was the whole point of this. It must have been a short one tonight. Yes. And it is. I mean, it was a, what, are, what are the thoughts on that? What are, what are we got? Okay, so one. Let me get back to you. Okay, so one of the things that I've been thinking about is. 